Hello, let's do the New York Times Medium Sudoku for April 22nd, 2024. For my medium solves, I take a very systematic approach designed to teach you what you want to be looking for in a step-by-step -step way. Uh, your solves can start out this way, uh, but the goal is to quote unquote graduate to uh, ways that may be a bit more fluid and intuition based, but you need to gain the intuition tuition. <laughs> you need to gain the intuition by uh, practicing uh, each individual step. So that is the goal of these puzzles. If you'd like to see a bit of a more fluid solve, although still utilizing the same methodology, uh, you can also watch my New York Times hard solves, which are still designed as a teaching tool, just a little bit less uh, in depth on concepts that I expect you to have learned in these medium solves. All right, with that said, uh, there is a link in the description, as always, uh, for you to solve the puzzle yourself in Sudoku Pad, which is the software I use. It is free, uh, it is web based. And I'm going to get started right now. <clears throat> okay, so for our first pass, we're going to be paying attention to bands. Bands are rows of three boxes. So there are three bands in the puzzle band one, band two, and band three. And we're going to be looking for basically one specific thing, uh, which is repeated givens in the band. Basically, for every given, is there a buddy? If, and if there's only one buddy, then that third one needs to go in the box they aren't in. So as an example, uh, what, I, what I recommend doing is comparing each box to each other box. Now, if there's three boxes, how many comparisons do you need to do minimum, which is it's three, and you only need to do three comparisons. So my recommendation is to start with one of the boxes that has the fewest uh, givens in it already, because that's going to be easiest to think about. And just think about the two numbers in it, or in this case, the two numbers in it, four and nine. And then you just look at both other boxes and you look for another four or nine. Now, we don't see one. So now what we have to do is compare the other two boxes against each other. Again, I would pick the one with fewest givens, if that exists, and one and seven. And we do see that we have a one and a seven over here. So let's take them one at a time. Let's start with one. So we have uh, we have two ones in this band, and they aren't in box two here, this middle box. And so we look at how they affect this middle box. Well, this one takes one out of these three cells, and this one takes one out of these three cells, because we can't repeat in the row. And then we also look down here to see if we have any happen to have any ones. And we do. This one looks up. And so additionally, uh, we have additional givens in this box that take the place of where we could have put a one. So this four is here, which means one can't go there because you can't put two digits in the same cell. So the result is there is only one cell left in this box that can be one. And every box has one to nine exactly once, which means we need a one in the box. Well, if we need a one and there's only one cell that can be one, that cell must be one. So logically, we can put a one there. That's called a hidden single. So if I ever say hidden single, that's what I mean. It means there's only one place that that digit could go. And then usually I'll say something like hidden single in the box or hidden single in the row, right? And that what that'll mean is that I found that it was hidden within that structure that needs a one. Uh, in general, we will call those houses, a row, column, or box are all generically called houses, if I ever use that term. Okay, and then we also have the sevens. Remember, we need to go back and look at those sevens. Those sevens look in. These aren't sevens. We can actually, we have a hidden single seven in the box as well. Now, normally I would follow up on that vertically, but we haven't done a vertical scan yet. And in the mediums, I would recommend only, only following up on things you've already done. There's no reason to look ahead. So in this case, we, we've only really scanned this band, so we don't really need to follow up too much on these. Now, the final thing that I will say is that if there is a completely full row or column within a box, like here and here, um, you can kind of count that as a fake buddy. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at these two rows and let's look for any digits in these two rows that aren't already in the box. So one and seven are already in the box. These are empty cells. We don't care about those. So four and nine are two digits that aren't already in the box. So let's look at the nine first. So this nine here, what does it do to this box? Well, because this row is full, we can kind of think about how we probably, we can think about having a buddy nine over here in this row. And in fact, we do, we'll, we'll, we'll prove that in a second. Um, there's kind of an invisible buddy over here because this is full. The but So this nine needs a buddy in this row. Think about it that way. This row is gonna have a nine in it, right? And it's not gonna be over here because this is full. So the buddy's gonna be over here. So you can kind of think about it as these aren't nine and this nine looks in. And we have a nine down here that looks up. So actually there is only one place in this box for nines. We have a hidden 
a hidden single nine in this box as well. And then now, like I said, there's, there's kind of an invisible buddy over here. So we have this nine and this nine that now repeat, follow up horizontally, follow up, uh, uh, for follow-ups, like I said, follow up on what you've already scanned. We, we're scanning this uh, this band here, so let's follow up by seeing that we now have at true buddy nines that look in here, and this nine looks up. So nine is in one of these two cells. Okay, well, we can't place the nine yet, but we want to remember that we re that we reduced nine in this box to just two places. That's, that's a really important thing to remember. So what I'm going to do in Sudoku Pad is I'm going to go into the corner marking mode, and I'm going to corner mark nines here. And what that does is we're going to use corner marks to designate that within the box, we have reduced a digit to just the cells that are corner marked. So in this case, the nine is limited to these two cells. We corner mark those two cells. I would recommend only using corner marks if there if a digit has been reduced to two places in the box or three places, but only if they're all in the same line, same row or column. So these are in the same row, right? If this was still allowed to be nine, I, I would be okay corner marking this. But if we reduce, let's say we for some reason reduce nine to these three cells, I would not recommend corner marking them at all because we're going to get confused later about this shape. We only want to have to look at lines or if there's only two left, we only want to have to look for that. Okay. You don't want fake lines in your, in your, in your corner marking is kind of the, the goal there. All right. We also said this four might be interesting, the four looking in and there's kind of a fake buddy four. Where is our fake buddy four? Well, we're going to learn that it's right here. But let's go through this. Oh, sorry, we're not. We're going to learn it's down here um, because this is full, right? So if this is full, where's our fake buddy four? It's over here. So you can kind of think about how these can't be four. It's obvious they're not four. <laughs> uh, and this four looks in. And then we look down for more fours and actually we get lucky and there's two more fours looking in. So actually there is a hidden single four in this box right here. We can place the four. Now we follow up on those fours and then we look down here. We see this four looking up and we can corner mark fours here. Now here's another thing that should trigger for you. We have corner marked four and nine into the same two cells as each other. What does that mean? Well, let's think about it. Within this box, four is in one of these two cells and nine is in the same two cells and both of them are only in those two cells. How many cells do I need for two digits in the box? Because we know there's gonna be a four in the box and there's going to be a nine in the box. How many cells do I need to place the four and the nine, well, I need two cells because it's two different digits. I can't put them both in the same cell. Well, these are the two cells then. I can't pick any other cells to put four and nine in, and I need to put four and nine into two of the cells. So this is what's called a hidden pair. We have a pair of digits in the box that have been limited to two cells. And so I'm going to use center marks, and I can convert those corner marks to center marks. I can use center marks to denote this four nine pair, and I can get rid of the corner marks in this case. Now, what is a center mark? Well, a center mark we will use to denote that this cell is reduced to these candidate values. When we look at the final solution of this puzzle, this cell will only be a four or a nine. And this cell will only be a four or a nine. That's what the center mark is telling us. We don't know which it will be, but we know that this will be a four or a nine and this will be four or nine. Additionally, because they share the same box and they share the same row, pick one. Uh, you only need one. Um, but because of that, they will be different because you can't repeat digits in a row or a box. And so um, because they're different, we know one of them will be four and one of them will be nine. So hopefully that's clear. Um, so that is our hidden pair for nine. And the whenever I we do a hidden technique, including all of these hidden singles that we found, a hidden technique removes any other digit we thought could go into that cell. So like when I placed this one right at the start, right? We had these ones looking in, we had this one looking up. This wasn't a one. When I placed this one, I removed all the other digits we thought could be in that cell. For example, three. Why can't this cell be three? Well, it, you'd think it could be, but if you inspect this box, you will see that there is no nowhere to put one. None of these cells can be one now. So no, it's not gonna be three, it's gonna be one, right? So by this hidden single one removed the option of putting three in that cell. And so it's it's the same here. This hidden pair removed the option of putting three in either of these cells, along with a bunch of other digits. So we want to think about those digits when we find this hidden pair. Better to think about it now than to try to remember later. So what are the digits that were actually removed from these cells? Well, one was not because they already couldn't have been one. Two was removed. So we just want to think about twos and whether there's any twos around here that might benefit. 
Well, we do have this two over here that looks into the box. And so in this box, two is actually reduced to only two places. So I'm going to corner mark twos there. How about, okay, three was removed as well, but I'm not seeing any threes around here that could be helpful. Four was not removed. Four is still an option. Five is removed, but only from this cell, because this, this five is telling us this already couldn't have been. But we can look at fives. This five looks up. This isn't five. Five is reduced to four places. That's not interesting to us right now. All right. What about six? Six and seven were not removed. They already couldn't be six, seven. Um, eight was removed. And that's the last thing that was removed. And so we can look for how eights are happening in this box. This isn't eight. These aren't eight. Eight's in three places, but it turns a corner. We don't want to mark quarter mark that. All right. So we've gone through every digit and we've learned what that means. Um, all we learned is that two is now in two places. That might come in handy later, though. All right. This is also full. So we want to look at these and find fake buddies, right? So this six looking into the box, these aren't six. This isn't six. Unfortunately, no six is down here. So six has been limited to these two cells. So we can corner mark sixes here. Now, we're expecting to have a fake buddy six up here, right? Because this was filled. Um, but we can prove it now. And we can use a concept called pointing. So what we have done is in this box, we have limited the six to two cells. So it's going to have a six. And so the six will end up here or it will end up here. Those are only two options. Often there's a commonality between the cells if they're um, if it's down to two places, right? In this case, what's the common attribute between these two cells? The common attribute is they are both in row two. They're, they share this row. So row two is going to have a six in it, but only one. And wherever this six ends up, it's going to use up the six for that row. And so this, how could this cell be a six? I mean, it, it seems like it should be able to be a six. If we look at the row and the column and the box, there aren't any sixes looking at it. But it can't be because these sixes, the six is going to be over here. And if the six is over here, it's not here. So really, we have this six looking in. And then these sixes, we call it pointing because you can kind of draw a line between them. And they point in that direction, right? So this six looks in. These sixes, these sixes point in, right? I'm not going to highlight these, though point in, removing six from all these, and then we have this six down here looking up. And so six ends up in one of these two cells only for the box. And these corner marks are going to try to, re, uh, try to uh, help us remember that we shouldn't put a six here. We shouldn't consider six as an option there. All right, we also have this column filled, um, but we, aren't, we haven't looked for buddies vertically yet, so we're, we're going to do that when we do the vertical scan. That'll come. All right. Um, the last thing that I'd like you to look at before moving on to the next band is, OK, I found what I think is everything in terms of buddies. So the last thing that I want to do here is I want to um, look for any rows, columns, or boxes that I've reduced to four or fewer uh, open cells. So for example, this box I've reduced to three. If I've reduced it to three, I would recommend just pencil it. When I say just pencil it, I mean put center marks in each cell for what's remaining to be uh, um, what that cell can still be. So in this case, we have the one and the two in the box. The box is going to need a three. We have a four. It needs a five. And if you look, it also needs an eight. So it's going to be down to three digits. And I would recommend only center marking cells if they're down to three or fewer candidates. And But because these were guaranteed to be three, we just center marked it. Unfortunately, there are no three fives or eights affecting these. So it's just three, five, eight. So that's kind of the worst case scenario. Um, additionally, this row is down to four, uh, four open cells. When it's four, I recommend thinking about it and then only marking the ones that are interesting. So we need three, five, six, eight for this row. Three, five, six, eight. Well, this cell can't be five or six. So this is only three, eight. This cell can't be an eight. So this is three, six, eight. Or sorry, three, five, six. And this cell can be any, all four of them since it's down to four which is not less than, which is not three or less, uh, I am not going to mark it. Uh, that's just going to be clutter. That's not going to be useful for a long time. It just makes it harder to scan. Now, you may think we're done. That's all the ones that are down to four or fewer, like this row is down to five. But this row is actually down to four because you think you, we already know where the four and the nine go, basically, right? So we don't have to consider where four and nine go because we already know. So there are only four open cells here. So we want to think about it. What are they? They are the two, three, five and eight. Remember, we're ignoring the four, nine. So two, three, five, eight. This cell's not two, so this can be three, five, eight. This cell's not three or five, so this is two, eight. 
This can be any of 2, 3, 5, 8. This can't be 8, though, so this is 2, 3, 5. Now, one thing that you may notice while penciling this, if you don't, it's OK, uh, but it's a very good thing to notice, is that in this row, when we thought about each digit, the 8 was only in these three cells. This cell couldn't be 8. And these three cells all have in common that they share box 2. And so this row is going to have an 8, and it's going to be in one of these three cells. And those three cells all happen to all be in the same box, which means we can corner mark the 8s there. And what that's going to do is that's going to, that's going to do what's called claiming. Claiming is when you've reduced a digit in a row, and we've reduced it to only cells that share the same box, and so it removes that digit from the rest of the box. So importantly, that means these two cells actually cannot be 8. If we tried to put an 8 in one of these two cells, like here, for example, we would not actually be able to put an 8 in this row anywhere, and that would be bad. So these cells are not 8, and that's what this corner mark is trying to remind us of. Okay, now we are truly done with that band. Now we're going to move on. Um, so I'm just going to start here because it has one given, and we do have a buddy four. So again, we're just starting out by looking for buddies. This top band had a lot more to do because it had filled rows. Um, so we spent a lot more time on it, and it was worth it. We got a lot of information out of it. Uh, so that buddy four, and now we just have to compare. There's not four over here, right? So now we just have to compare uh, these two together, and I recommend starting with the one with the fewest givens. So you can see there's no five in here, but there is a nine. So we have a buddy nine, and we also have two nines looking in like this. So we have a hidden single 9 in this box. You do want to look up and make sure it doesn't affect things you, you've already scanned. Um, but in this case, it, it does not. So we don't need to worry about it. Um, we're looking for more. There, there are no more buddies. And there are no um, filled rows or columns. So I'd recommend moving on at this point. Um, because again, we spent a lot more time on this because there was a horizontally filled row here and here, and we got a lot out of that. But there isn't there isn't that here. We'll come back. We might find more when we come back. Um, but we'll be looking for different things. OK, now now these. Uh, we're going to start with the 1, 2, 5. It's the least here. So starting with 1, there is a 1 buddy over here. That is a hidden single 1 in this box. Um, we haven't done a vertical scan yet, so actually we don't really need to follow up on that. Uh, we'll find the buddy 1 when we do a vertical scan. Um, that was the one. Now we need to look at for twos. There are no twos here or here, but this row is filled, right? So there is kind of a buddy two over here. We just don't know exactly where yet. But what we can do is we can say that two is reduced to two places here. And then if you want, you can think of this as pointing, or you can think of it as I'm going to need a buddy over here. But the two is pointing in like this, and this two looks in, and that does tell us that indeed there is a two in one of these two cells. And then we have the five. These two fives look in, and we can actually place a hidden single five here. Now what has happened here is we filled in this row and this row. So let's take a closer look at that. Let's look at these two rows here, and let's look for anything that's not already placed. So two we already, we already dealt with. All of these are empty. One is already in the box. Five is in the box. Six is not. Four is in the box. So we want this six to look in. We look up here for any sixes. We have this one. It doesn't actually help because we already had givens there. And these aren't six because this row was filled. So six is in one of these two. What does this trigger? This triggers, oop, I found a hidden pair. Awesome. So we convert those quarter marks to hit it to center marks. Because these cells can only be two six, so that we can fit two and six into the box. Very nice. Um, we have this pair here, and this is filled. You can kind of think of this as filled now too, in terms of finding buddies, because we know it's going to be two, five, six. It's not going to have any other digits in it. Same as knowing this is one, four, nine. So really, there's only two digits left in this box, and I would just immediately look at what they are. So what are the two digits we're missing that, that aren't accounted for in this box? Well, they're the 3 and the 8. And we look up here and hope to find the 3, 8. We do not. So we just mark in center marks the 3, 8. But now this row, it was down to three digits, and we know the 3 and 8 are over here. So what's the missing digit that we haven't accounted for? And it's the 9. So this last, the 9 can only go right here, so we can place the 9. Now this is full too, so we want to really pay attention to this stuff. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at these, right? And I'm gonna try to find some, find any digits that aren't already in the box. You can do this with your eyes; you don't have to highlight it, but it, maybe it'll help uh, at first. So the one is already in the box. The eight is not, so we'll we'll keep that eight highlighted. Nine, four is is interesting, right? Uh, we would have found the buddy as well. Uh, the one and the five. The two is not interesting, but the six is. So whichever one of these is six is interesting. So the four, the eight, and the six. So four, 
is going to look in here. We have these two fours looking down. So there's actually a hidden four in this box right here, hidden single four. Uh, the eight is looking in. There are no eights up here, so eight ends up in one of these two. And then remember, we have the six looking in here because the six is over here. We don't know which one of these will end up six, but one of them will. And so that still is kind of like pointing, or you can think of this as a pair. Uh, a pair, will, because these match and share the same row, we know they're going to be different. So one of them will be two, one of them will be six. So we basically know where the two and six are in this row. They're here. So they're not here, right? So these aren't six. There's no sixes up here, though. So we just put a six in one of these two. All right. And then additionally, we want to look at these against this box. So we already, these are empty, right? The two six, uh, the two and the six are accounted for in this box. We already have the twos corner marked and the six placed. Uh, five is in the box, four is in the box. Uh, one is in the box, but nine is not. So we'll see the nine looks in and this nine looks down. These are not nine, so we can place the nine in the box. Now you notice this turned red. You may or may not have the red markings on. It's up to you if you want them on. It is a setting. It is this check pencil marks setting. You can turn that off, and if you do, you do not get that red mark. I keep it on because I don't want to get stuck on a puzzle where that I'm trying to demonstrate how to solve on something super easy, like not noticing that this nine takes a nine out of here. So that's why I use the red marks in my solves. I don't I don't like missing something like that. I think that that's it's boring to be hunting the puzzle for like, oh, I missed that this nine sees here. Um, so that's me. I like to look at the, at the more general solve logic of the puzzle, not, not scanning in that simple way. Anyway, um, so this nine, we, if we look up, we see that this four nine can no longer be nine. So we can remove nine as a center mark here. Cause remember the center marks just represent what are the possible final digits that this cell could end up being just based on any logic we've done so far, like what givens it sees. And like in this case, it was a hidden pair, so that logic got baked into the center mark, so we don't have to remember that. So, But now this can't be 9. And so now there's only one candidate left. Well, if there's only one candidate that a cell can be, then it must be that candidate. That's called a naked single. It's called naked because if we, if we were center marking all the cells, we would... We see nakedly from the center marks in the cells that it there is only one digit left. And so it is a naked four. It is nakedly a four. So that four, now that does a few things. One, it it made it resolved this four nine pair, right? This can't be four anymore. So that technically makes this a naked single nine. Um but then this four also, it looks down here and it removes one of our four corner marks. As soon as a four, uh, a corner mark gets removed, we want to look to see how many corner marks are left in the box of that digit. And there's only one. So actually what we found here is a hidden single four now, because what, think about what a hidden single is. A hidden single is within the box. We have reduced that digit to only one place in the box. And that's exactly what this corner mark is telling us. So we can place the four as well. Actually, we're done with fours in the puzzle. Um, in terms of follow-up, we want to make sure this nine didn't have a single buddy. And it, it, we, the nines are done though, so we don't need to worry about following up there. Um, if you were savvy and you wanted to look ahead, you could see these two nines buddy up and we could place this nine here. But uh, I'm being systematic here. I really should be placing that nine, uh, but we haven't scanned that yet. We haven't done that vertical scan yet. We'll find it when we do the vertical scan. So if you don't want to worry too much about follow-ups early on and you just want to seed the puzzle with this stuff, I think it's okay to ignore that, but if you, I mean, in, in the other hand, if you see something, say something, right? If you, <laughs> if you see it, just place it, right? Uh, but in this case, actually, that's false. I don't know why I just went on about that because there's already a nine in the box. But let's say there wasn't, right? And you followed up and you could place the nine. Yeah, maybe, you, maybe you should if you happen to see it. Um, but I would, I wouldn't in my solve anyway. But sorry about that. There is already a nine in the box. In fact, nines are done too. Um, but if there was a follow up for that. Um, I wouldn't follow up that way in this medium solve. That's all I'm saying. Um, sorry about that mistake. Okay, so now what's the last thing we do in this band? Because remember, we were we were scanning this band. We got a lot out of it, right? Because we we utilized the fact that rows got filled. As soon as a row gets filled, um, that should trigger you to really think about that that uh, that direction a lot. So, um, well, we're looking for rows, columns, or boxes with. Well, first of all, I don't even know if we finished scanning for duplicates. So let's finish that. There's a lot of givens here, though. So let's just go, go over it quickly. Ones are done. Um, I'm just going to go digit by digit. Twos, we have marked up. Uh, we don't know much about threes. We have the three pair here, but we don't know much about threes over here. So that's not helpful. Uh, the fours are done. The fives are done. The sixes are accounted for. 
Uh, the seven, we don't know much about sevens over here. Um, the, uh, the eights um, are accounted for, and then the nines are done. Okay, so no more, no more duplicates. But we want to look for rows, columns, boxes with three or fewer, or sorry, four or fewer open cells, and that, that's both rows. Because remember, we know where the two six is, right? So there's only three digits left in this row. What are the three digits? Well, we'll mark it as we go. We know where the one and the two are. We need to account for the three. We have the four and five and six. We need the seven and we need the eight. And now we discover here, either by looking or just by penciling and then, and then looking, we see that this cell sees a three and a seven already. So it actually doesn't have three or seven as a candidate, and that makes it a naked single eight. So we can place the eight there. And you could even, if you think in your head first, three, seven, eight, you might scan up and see this three, seven and immediately just place the eight. But that does remove eight as an option from these two, including this corner mark. But we already placed the eight in the box, so that's just a cleanup. That's not signaling that we can place an eight. This eight also affects the column. We look back up here and we see this is now a naked single two. And when we do that, we also removed a eight corner mark, but there are still two places for eight in the box. So we don't place it yet. This does though, it removes a two center mark and a two corner mark. Removing the center mark, we're just down to two options. So we can't place either of those yet, but removing the two corner mark tells us that this is the only place in the box for two. This is why we corner marked it back then, uh, is so that now when we see that this two got eliminated, we can place this two right away without having to rediscover that it was the only place for two in the box. Okay, that two now looks down, removes this two corner mark, placing this two. All right, now I'm seeing this box is down to just three and seven, so I'm gonna put this three, seven here. And I'm seeing this box is down to three, six, seven, so I'm gonna fill three, six, seven. And this can't be the seven, because of the seven up here. Okay. Well, you can kind of see that now there's nothing left really to do in this in these boxes horizontally, because we've got this three, seven pair, this two, six pair, this three, eight pair, and this three, six, seven triple. There's really nothing to see. So we don't need to worry about horizontally this this band anymore. All right, and now we have finished our horizontal scan. So now we're going to do the same thing, but a vertical scan. So we're going to look for buddies vertically. So I'm going to start with this stack. It's called a stack because um, you can see it like three boxes stacked up on top of each other, right? So we're going to start with this box because it has the least givens. And we're going to look vertically. So four is already done and nine is already done. Every box has a four and nine already. So we, we can ignore those. Uh, so now we just compare these two against each other. So the one has a buddy. And I'm just going to go in numerical order here. Uh, we do the two does not have a buddy. We don't know exactly where it is. Three we don't know much about. Fours are done. Um, fives we don't know anything about here. Sixes they're accounted for, but not vertically. Um, and we've got the sevens. So we do have two sevens. They buddy up, and this seven looks in. So we do have a hidden seven in this box. If you want, you can immediately place the three eight here, or you can wait until you're done finding buddies. It depends on how how your cognitive load is at the moment. Um, and then nines are done. Eight, eights, we don't know much about. Nines are done. Okay. So this column I already took care of. It's down to two. Uh, this column is down to five. We don't really want to think about that. This column, again, we don't really have any pairs or triples going on here. And this column is down to six. So we don't really want to think about that either. Uh, no fill. Uh, th this column is filled, but we already kind of accounted for these and, and there's no fake buddies going on here. Uh, this is already penciled in, right? So, um, I think we're good on this on this stack. Let's move on to the next stack. Um, so uh, we'll start with again. We're going four nine because they're done. Uh, start with three and seven here. So the seven does have a buddy, and you can see in this box that actually from our center marks we can see that seven was limited to these two. It may or may not be worth marking at this point, um, but I will anyway. Um, so the seven one two four. Okay, the two has a buddy, and that puts a two in one of these two cells. The other thing we want to do uh, when we follow up is we want to check to see if we um, have similar restrictions on twos in either of these boxes, but we do not. When we place twos in a in a column like this, missing one of the rows. All right. Um, so that was the two. So one. Oh yeah, we didn't look at the ones. The ones look into here. These aren't one. So there's only one place for one. That's a hidden one in this box. Follow up horizontally. We see that this can't be a one anymore, but now there is still in two places here. Um, and I, I'm seeing this now. We have these ones looking in, this one looking in. Um, probably would have seen that in the vertical scan, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and corner mark those ones there too, just because I saw it. All right. Um, I know I'm going back on what I just said of not skipping ahead, but 
we're almost there anyway. We're about to do that vertical scan. <laughs> um, in fact, yeah, we're 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 gonna look for um, yeah here. <laughs> this column is down to one digit, so let's fill what that digit is. It is a six. That removes six from here. This box is down to three digits, the three, five, and eight. So we can fill that out. A lot of a lot of three, five, eight action going on here. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, this column is down to five. This column is down to to five as well. So we don't really want to look at those right now. Um, is there are there any fake buddies? This whole column is done. Um, let's think about this box here and and how these columns affect it. It, it is because this is this is filled, right? So we don't care about blank cells. Uh, we don't care about the four and the nine. They're already done. Uh, the one is already in the box. The seven's in the box, but the two is not in the box. We already marked it. So we found everything we needed from that. Okay. Um, let's do this final stack. So. Again, four nines are already done, so five is the only interesting digit. It does mean five is in one of these two cells. Um, this is down to, okay, yeah, so this column is down to only three or eight. Let's finish finding our buddies, I guess. I don't want to skip too far ahead. Um, so we did the five. We need to compare these against each other, right? So I'll start here. One, two, four, seven, nine, but we don't care about four, nine. So really just one, two, and seven. So the one has a buddy. We already have that marked. Uh, the two has a buddy. We do not have that marked, and there's no twos over there, so we just mark twos here. Um, uh, and the seven, the seven does not have a buddy. Okay. Now we look for um, filled rows or columns like this one. We want to look at these, but this is already down to three seven. We're not going to find anything, right? We can skip that. Um, no other vertical fill. Okay. Now we can look for rows, columns, boxes with uh, four or fewer open cells. This is down to two. We know it's down to three and eight. And this three looks in, saying this can't be the three. So which one is the three? Well, this one's the three. And this one's the eight as a result. That three resolves this five and this six. And now this box has only one digit left, so we can fill the eight. This row has only it just needs a five place. It goes here. Uh, and you can just see from our center marks, these aren't five, these aren't five. And so now this is the only place for five in this box. All right, that was a good follow-up horizontally there. But we want to follow up vertically on everything we just got. So we got the five here. It has a buddy. This five looks in. So there's a five in one of those two. Um, the four and nine we already had. Over here, uh, let's just rescan the, the blue digits here. The one, uh, the five is interesting. In fact, the five is placed in this box. This, there is now a hidden single five in this box. This is why we follow up. That removes this five corner mark, meaning there's only one five corner mark in the box now. We have a hidden single five. That removed a one corner mark, giving us a hidden single one in the box. That one removes this one corner mark, meaning there's a hidden single one in this box now. And now all the ones and fives are done in the puzzle. Okay. Um, so there's not much to follow up on digits that are already done, um, but let's just double check the six and the two. Um, and then over here, this box is full, so there's always going to be buddies. Um, I think at this point, though, let's think about this column and this column, which are already down to three or fewer. So uh, one, two, we need three, six, and seven here. And these neither of these can be seven, because we have a seven here and a seven here. In fact, I didn't follow up on this seven. I'm not sure when that got placed. But it has a buddy horizontally, and that places the seven here, which then places the two as a hidden single. And then now this is a naked single three, and this is a naked seven. Whenever you place a three in the corner, the Sudoku pad software celebrates that in some way. If you don't like that, you can turn off the three in the corner effect. It's just a little um, a little meme that's going on. All right, so this three makes this a seven. OK. Um, we're almost done with the puzzle, right? All of our rows, columns, boxes are very, very restricted at this point. So I would recommend at this point just switching to just thinking about the row, column, or box with the fewest open cells and uh, just penciling. So in this row, we need a two, and we also need a um, six. It's not resolved, but probably helpful. Um, this row is down to three, so we need the three. We have the four, five, we need six, and we need eight. OK, now something about this row that I want to point out. Um, I, don't, I, I don't need to use this, but I just want to point out claiming again. So in this row, we have filled out the three, six, eight, and we've noticed this one's not eight. 
So what does that mean for eights in this row? Well, the only other two cells that could be eight are over here, and they share box four. This is going to claim the eights in box four. The row has decided that its eight is in box four, which means box four can't have any other eights in it. Well, if box four can't have any other eights in it, and I do know there's an easier way to resolve this, by the way. Um, if box four can't have any other eights in it, then um, this can't be eight, right? If I try to put an eight here, then row f this row, row six, sorry, if I was saying row four, this is row six. Row six cannot have any eights. It would be three cells that want to be three six only. So that would be no good. So this can't be an eight, which means it can only be a three. So we can place the three there. That resolves this six and this three. It resolves this eight and this three, which resolves this eight and this three. This is a six, this is an eight, this is two and six, this is two and six, this is three and six. And I'm just going to finish the puzzle here. We get the two, we get the eight, and we're done. All right. Yeah. And if you are interested in SudokuCon uh, about a year from now, then uh, definitely fill out that survey that happens at the end of, uh, of the puzzle. Um, I am one of the uh, kind of minor organizers of the event trying to help out. All right. So. That's it. That's the puzzle. Um, let me try to recap. So this uh, this hidden four nine pair that we found early on seemed interesting. The the most interesting thing is this band and this band. The more we looked at it, the more we found. Even just within looking at the band only, we on, we were only looking horizontally, and we managed to get quite a lot out of these two bands. And by the time we were done scanning bands, the puzzle was almost done. To be honest, scanning stacks did help out. But really, the puzzle was was close to finished by the time we even finished our initial pass. So that can happen. It won't always happen. But I think the moral of the story, the moral of this puzzle here, or the thing to that that we really benefited from focusing on, was when there was a filled row or column in the box. So this this started out filled, but we also ended up filling up others as we went, um, and paying attention to that, and paying attention to the two rows that weren't filled to find our kind of fake buddies. Uh, was very, 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 very fruitful. So uh, that's what I uh, pull away from this puzzle, other than we had quite a lot of hidden singles and boxes as well, and those are very good to find. And that's it. Um, I didn't even get to phase two of my scan in this one. Uh, if you want to know what phase two is, either just keep watching in the future, or you can go back and watch some of my older medium solves. Um, let me know how uh, you did on this puzzle. And of course, if you enjoyed this, then why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.